Hi all. Yes, I know it's me again, but um, there's a reason I had a request. And uh, a couple of people I know in New York City, a few dancers, were concerned that some of the posts I've been making lately uh, may be taken as too critical of the New York City Ballet, the board, everything that's going on, and that possibly because of the situation and all the pressure and all the uh, Obviously, everybody knows uh, some of the stuff that's going on now with the New York City Ballet. They are under a lot of pressure, and and people have the normal tendency to circle the wagons when they feel they're being attacked. And so I wanted to do this new little chat just to try to reassure everybody. I'm, I don't mean to attack anybody. I'm, I'm very sorry if it's seen that way. Um, I am a, a perfectionist. I think everybody knows that. Um, it's not that I only see things that are wrong. I also see things that are right. Uh, it's just that I know people have a tendency um, to not want to face certain things. Um, but before we get into that, uh, I, I knew when I started these chats that I was taking a risk that, um, that people would find all kinds of ulterior motives for me to do this. Um, I started simply because when I read the criteria the Board of Directors put out, I checked off every box. Um, I, I also am fully aware that I have not been a force in New York City or New York City Valley since the last century. How's that? And that um, the work I do that I post online of staging, balancing ballets, you know, for companies, um, that gets very little audience. I'm sure that doesn't filter down to the current dancers of the company or the administration or the board. They don't know what the Balanchine Trust is really up to all the time. And that's who sends me out to stage his ballets as the trust. And I'm very happy they do. Um, but maybe I should say why I haven't been around New York City Ballet. Um, <laughs> I don't want this to be taken the wrong way. I'll make it brief. Um, Peter Martins and I had a falling out in 1987, a few years after Balanchine died. And I was freelancing, staging a lot of ballets for the Paris Opera in those days. Uh, the Royal Ballet, mostly companies in Europe. But I always, you know, New York City Ballet was always my home. That's the company I grew up in, that's where I danced, that's where I choreographed under Balanchine. And everything he taught me just makes more sense with the New York City Ballet than any other company. So I was always hoping that um, I would have um, the ability to go back home again, as it were. And uh, so Peter finally invited me to teach for the company and to do a ballet for their 19, I guess it was 87, American Music Festival, the first one. Now I won't go into all the details of what happened because I have to save that for my book. <laughs> but needless to say, Peter and I had a very bad falling out. Um, kind of was along the same lines as his falling out with Violet Verdi and Suzanne Farrell, so I was in good company. And uh, that's why I didn't uh, come around the company. I, I didn't want to, I couldn't impose myself, and it was very painful for me, because that was my home, and if Balanchine were alive, I would have been back there in a minute, just as a teacher at SAB, if nothing else. Um, but, be that as it may, so now that things have changed and there's a chance for the company, in my view, to put back some things that have been lost and changed over time, which is inevitable. Mr. B knew it. Um, he always teased me that I loved his ballets more than he did. And I'd say, yeah, you're right, I do. I love your ballets more than you do. And when he died, you know, he, he didn't leave anything to the board. He left it uh, to the various wives and women that he'd been closest to, the ballerinas. He used to say, après moi le board, after me the board. And he would be the first person to understand all this and not be upset about it like I am. But as he said, I loved his ballets more than he did. And I'm a perfectionist and I, it just really kills me to see things changed when they don't need to be changed. And this has nothing to do with the dancers. I'm gonna say it again. The dancers are just doing what they're taught. Uh, for the most part, they've been taught very well I mean, there's some, my God, the talent in that company is still staggering. Um, 
there are you know new choreographers and Justin Peck is amazing and you know Wilden worked with the company and Rob Monsky works with the company I mean so on on the level of new ballets everything seems to be pretty good um, so I have no complaints about that my only concerns always <laughs> will be that uh, I think that the New York City Ballet is attached to Balanchine in such an integral way that it behooves the company to always do his ballets as close to possible as the way he wanted them, and that includes lighting, decor, sets, etc. Um, you have, again, you have no uh, shortage of new talented choreographers, so that's not even an issue. You have no shortage of, you know, wonderful dancers coming up. That's not an issue. My only concern, and why I threw my hat in the ring in the first place, was because I believe uh, that the New York City Ballet as an institution, an SAB, was founded for Balanchine's genius. It's to this day, it still kind of lives off his name and it lives off of his ballets, which is great. Nothing wrong with that. So I just wanted them to be the best. I mean, I don't think it's that complicated. I mean, I have had, I've been around a long time, so of course I have some baggage. Uh, how could you? <laughs> to work as much as I have and not have some baggage. But I've also had some really big successes that I think would be useful for the company, plus which I've produced, like the Casablanca, which you can look up online and things. Um, and I'm working on a couple new projects now that are equally big. I wish I were able to announce them. I can't until after the first of the year. But, um, so I just wanted to clarify that, that my criticisms are not of the dancers. My criticisms, the board is doing the best they can. There's a whole thing I need to write about, you know, the history of the New York City Ballet, and there wasn't even a board for the first 24 years of the company. So, I mean, it's a very unique situation, and Lincoln's position, and how Lincoln Kirstein controlled everything after Balanchine died, and, and uh, so there was an imbalance there. There used to be a balance between him and Balanchine, but that went away. Anybody following Balanchine, Peter Martins or anybody, would have a, you know an almost impossible task because Balanchine was simply God to the company and the dancers, and so that's a bit of a black void when God leaves. However, he left all of his ballets. He left his aesthetic. He left his teaching methods, and um, those haven't gone anywhere. However, my purpose in life at the moment. Not to get the directorship. I understand I'm just way too gone, too out of the loop. But um, maybe to just be a kind of a remembrance of things. Not a librarian, but a memory keeper. Mr. B always said I had the best memory of anybody he'd ever met, so. And I can't get rid of it. I'm putting on, at the end of this, on YouTube anyway, I'm putting on a clip of me and Tarantella, which is a funny story because I wasn't supposed to dance it and I was flat on my back for a week before it was filmed with a flu with 104 temperature. And Eddie Villella was supposed to dance it and uh, I was staying at a friend's house because I, could, I couldn't walk, I was really in bed. And when I got back to my apartment, there was a bunch of telegrams from Betty Cage, the general manager. And this was before cell phones, so nobody could reach me. And they said, you have to get your ass up to uh, Toronto this that evening, literally. Because at 9 o'clock the next morning, they were going to film Tarantella, and Mr. B wanted me to do it. Now, I hadn't done it with the company. I'd only done it on tours and concerts with Gelsey, mostly. Sarah Leland, but mostly with Gelsey Kirkland. And Mr. B knew I had done it a lot, but he just hadn't cast me yet. So I show up in Toronto. I get there at 9, weak as a kitten. Mr. B said, don't worry, dear, you do one time, just one time, we film once, that's all, and then, okay. So I went, okay, all right, I'll try, you know. So, and it was cement, you know, because those TV studios in those days were cement. So, <laughs> Patty was great, McBride was always the sweetest thing. So anyway, music starts, out there, you know, killing myself. We get to the end, the brise volets, and the cameras break. And they yell, stop, you know, and I fall on the floor because I was, you know, 
I had given it my all for that one take. And Balanchine comes down and he said, uh, oh dear, we have to do again. The camera's had problems. I said, I can't do it again. He goes, no, no, you can do. And I went, I, I really can't do. You know, and I was white as a ghost and I really felt, you know, like I was passing out. And So he said, okay, dear, then just mark. And then when we get to Brise Volets, then do full out. And we will splice together. And I went, okay. And that's what I did. But a few months later, there was a showing of it. Uh, just for the producers, etc., in a private screening room. And they had spliced together some of my first take when I was dancing full out and some of the second take when I was marking. And by the Zevolets, anyway, I was dead. And Balanchine gave me this not very nice look, and I went, oh, God. He... And I went up to tell him, to remind him that I'd been sick, because this was a few months before when we had filmed it, and, and he kind of didn't want to hear me. And he didn't cast me in it for a year. I didn't say anything, because I didn't look good. <laughs> so anyway, finally, after about a year, he cast me in it. And I was healthy by then, of course. And so I did it full out, and I loved doing Tarantella. It was a very me kind of role. And he, he came up to me afterwards and goes, No, dear, not bad. Why don't you do like that in, in, in Canada? And I went, well, do you remember? I was sick, I had the flu, and I hadn't been out of bed for a week and he went oh no I forgot oh, not bad dear okay and then he started casting me in it and then practically I was the only one that did it until I left the company then Helgi started doing it but uh, ha, that just goes to show you so it wasn't that you know I had just an, always a honeymoon with Balanchine he could be mad at me too but I understood why he was mad and I'm sorry he didn't remember that I'd been sick but um, so what I'm putting on here at the end of this because I like the lighting is just the first solo of Tarantella when I was still had some energy, even though I had been in bed for a week. But it's that kind of attack and um, energy that I still have that I wanted to give to the company. I wanted to give this to the dancers. I wanted to give them my all. I wanted to give them everything Balanchine told me. Because let's face it, there's not that many of us around anymore. Um, I don't want to say who because I don't want to date them, but really, I mean, the, there's a lot of people that worked uh, for Balanchine the last few years of his life, starting from 70, from 1976, but already by then he was already starting to have health problems. Now, he was still brilliant and he still created great ballets, so I'm, you know, but it wasn't the same classes and certain things had changed and <clears throat> so I always remember his classes before 1976. Um, I remember uh, everything. When Peter had me teaching with the company, he came in and watched about five minutes of one of my first classes. And afterwards he said to me, he said, you know, he said, John, he said, how did you remember all those things he said? You know? And I thought to myself, well, how did you forget? But as Peter Marnes himself has said, so I can say it, as he has said in his book, the first few years that he was in the company, he and Balanchine didn't get along and he didn't take Balanchine's classes. So he only really started taking Balanchine's classes later in Balanchine's life. Um, he preferred Stanley Williams at the school. It was more Danish and more what he was used to. He did start taking Balanchine's classes, though, at the end. You know, and, and uh, that was I was glad. Better late than never. I mean, I was really happy he did. But <clears throat> a lot of people that started working for Balanchine in those years, you know, and I, I'm not putting them down. I, I hope people don't get so sensitive. But they miss some things that... People like Suzanne Farrell, myself, Kay Mezo, Suki, Sarah Leland, um, Jacques D'Amboise, certainly uh, remember of Balanchine's style and Balanchine's classes. Now, to be perfectly blunt, Eddie Villella didn't take Balanchine's classes, and Eddie has already said that in his book, so I'm not telling any tales out of school. Eddie was a brilliant dancer and a role model, and we all loved him, but he didn't take Balanchine's class. His, uh, he said that his muscle structure, he had very heavily muscled legs, and he said that he cramped too much in Balanchine's fast uh, work, etc. So Eddie was never in class. Um, so what I wanted to bring to the company, and I don't care about titles, what I wanted to bring the company was my memory and my energy and especially coaching the boys' roles that I did. TV just came back on, so I had to say bye. Goodbye. Goodbye.